right? So first usable address on the routers. So we'll do fast ethernet 00 and then fast ethernet 01. So we click here and we hit enter. We say interface F a zero slash zero boom IP address we put it in one seven three dot sixteen dot sixty four dot one but now we have to calculate a slash twenty three subnet mask so two five five dot two five five right dot what's it gonna be what's it gonna be well two five two would be magic number four, right? But we want to do magic number two. I think it's 254.0. I believe that's correct. All right. So hit enter. No shutdown. Um, one of my students said, good point. Don't forget to do copy run start. Don't forget to save your your running config to your startup config, and that's good. I think in Packet Tracer it auto saves, but I'm not sure. So let's do the second one though, really quickly. So interface, we can just switch right to it. FA0 slash 1, right? We'll do an IP address. And I wonder if we could do up arrow. Yeah, there it is. I'm doing an up arrow to jump straight to the 66.1, right? and hit enter and then I'll do up arrow to no shutdown and hit enter and that's up then if I want to I could do control C and a copy run start which is short for copy running dash config space startup dash config and hit enter so it just saved our configuration so now these are up okay and since this, uh, this uh, packet tracer is based on the route summarization packet tracer, I'm going to go right to that as a microcosm of this whole assignment. So if this router wanted to reach hosts on these two networks, right, these are subnetted networks, okay, what we could do is if this router right here, R2, wanted to talk to these two networks over here, he could put a static route to each network in its configuration, a static route, and then you could route traffic and reach hosts on these two networks. But what this router could do instead is put a summary route for the 173.16.66 network and the 173.16.64 network. And so it would only have to enter one route into its routing table because it could just put in a summary route. So the question becomes, how do we find the summary route for the 173.16.64 network and the 173.16.66 network? Well, here's how we do it. I've put both of those IP addresses down here in binary. All right? And so what you're going to do is you're going to find the last common bit of these two IP addresses. And if we do that, we can see that the last common bit is right here, these two zeros before we get the one right here that changes this IP address to a 66. This one is in the twos place right here, and it changes this IP address from a 64 to a 66. So the last common bit is actually a slash 22. Okay, so the last common bit is the 22nd bit over here, right? And I'm going to do that again, slash 22. All right, so the last common bit is right here, 22, because this would be bit 23 and this would be bit 24. So the summary address is 173.16.64. Sixty-four, not including this one, right? Right here, sixty-four dot zero is the summary address for this network right here. Okay, so that is the summary address. And if this router puts that route in there, it'll be able to reach both of these networks with just one route instead of two in its table. Now, why will this summary address reach these two networks? Well, we already know for a fact 
that this 64 network goes to 66, and this 66 network goes all the way up to 67.255. And in a slash 22, the magic number, the place value, is 4. So this route will cover the network 64, 66, but not cover 68. It'll only cover that far, right? Why? Because it's a 4, so 64, and the next network 68. So it'll cover four, ne uh, four numbers, right? This magic number. So in this router, all we have to do is put in that static route. So we say enable conf t. We go to global configuration mode, and we want to put that in there, 17316.64 22. Okay, and so we say IP route to the 172.16, and actually it's 73, I'm sorry, dot 16, that's what we wanted, the 173.64.0 network, and then a slash 22, which would be 255.255.252.0, okay? And how do we get there? We're going to get there by, we could, since it's serial interfaces, we could just say out of our serial interface. So we could say out of serial 0 slash 0 slash 0. And now we have a static route to reach the 64 summary route, which will actually cover 64 and 66 because of the magic number of 4 taking us from 64 all the way up through 65, through 66, through 67, but not covering 68. 68 is not summarized by this summary address. Just 64 up till 68. And so now you have a summary address in there. And if we wanted to, we could put hosts on here and we could actually ping those hosts and reach those hosts. All right, let's test this summary route situation out just to prove the point, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'll just really quickly, this is not part of the learning, but it's still important, right? So what we'll do is put two hosts here. We're going to quickly, we're just going to quickly set them up. Okay, with the auto hook up right there, right? And then we have to give them an address. So since they were the first address, let's just give them the second address in the network. So slash 23 and so we'll take this host right here, right? We'll just go to desktop, IP configuration, 173.16.0 the network was 64, and this will be host number 2. The subnet mask is slash 23, so we know that that is actually a 254. The gateway, 173.16.64.1, right? All right, that looks good. And now for PC1, We'll do the same thing. Take it over here, go to desktop, IP configuration. Two. And we're going to, oh, I did this wrong. I'm sorry. I need to change that to 16 and change this to 254. All right, I think that looks right. 173.16.66.2 and then 173.16.66.1 is the gateway, the router. All right, and now just to test, we should be able to ping these hosts. So we'll open up our router here. We'll do a control C to get to this mode and we'll type a ping. 
oops, 173.16.64.2, success. And then we'll do the same thing to 66.2, which is on a separate network, and also success. Well, right there, four successes. So with the one summary route in this routing table, we're able to ping these two separate hosts on their separate networks. So our summary route must have worked, right? So instead of having to put in two routes for these two networks, we're able to just have to put in one route.